Welcome, Flood Audio Sorcerers, Wizards and Gears to my channel. I'm Dan Spencer, and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to fetch our recording, mixing, and mastering skills. So in today's video, we're talking about the Manny Morrow Quinn Tone Shaper plugin by Waves. Now, Waves is running a special on this plugin right now through September 15th, 2020, and it's absolutely free. So I will post a link below so you can go and get it for yourselves. And this plugin is a parallel compressor with some tonal shaping controls to it. So it's a pretty cool plugin and it can help take your sound from that 80% level to the 100% level if it's missing something that you don't really know what it's missing. It's just, it's kind of a cool plugin. It kind of helps you figure out what you need to do to take it to the next level. So again, before we get to this video, I do want to remind you guys that I offer mixing and mastering services. If you go to audiosocer.com, you can check out my samples and my rates and I give 20% off to new customers. All you gotta do is sign up for my email list. If you guys have liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know how new videos coming out. So with that being said, let's get to this tutorial. All right, so here we are on Pro Tools. And today we are talking about the Manny Maroquin Tone Shaper plugin by Waves. Now this plugin is actually a parallel compressor, even though when you see it, it doesn't seem that way. The uh, compression actually happens behind the scenes and we have minimal control over the tonal balances of each band. So how I want to show you this plugin is going to be on the drum bus. We're going to create a parallel version of the drum bus. So basically parallel compression of the whole entire drum mix. And I think that'll be the best way for you guys to hear what it sounds like. Now, of course, before we get to that, I'm going to show you all the parameters in a plugin and how to use it properly. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create our stereo aux track, which is gonna be our parallel compression track. So I have my drum bus highlighted here because I wanna put it next to it. Again, on a PC, Control-Shift-N will launch your track window. Also on a Mac, it would be Command-Shift-N. And we're gonna do a stereo aux track. And uh, we will just call it, I don't know, we wanna call it paradrums. Let's do that, paradrums. Okay, and then we got our parallel drum track right there. Now we wanna send a copy of this over here. So we'll go to the send here, go to bus. We'll just find an open stereo um, bus here. Let's do nine and 10. We wanna put this at Unity. And then we also wanna put it on pre-fader because that will send a copy of it before we mess with the actual fader down here. So it'll be untainted. And then we just wanna put it on the input side here Go down our bus, so I'm going to 9 and 10. So it's sending directly to there. Now, this track goes to the drum mix fader, and that's where we're going to want to send this one to, just to make sure everything is time aligned properly. So we'll send that there. So everything's pretty good here. So the next thing we want to do is actually just put the plug in on the track here. So let's do that. And let's see, this is going to be Manny M Tone Shaper. Okay. So this is what the plugin looks like. And there's not a whole lot of parameters in here. So starting here with this direct fader here, this is a mix of the direct and the process sound. So basically your untainted and tainted sound. And you could turn it higher up if you want more of the initial unprocessed sound, or you can turn it down if you want more of the process sound. So where it starts here is basically unity for this particular plugin. Now you can also go here and turn off the direct sound so you can hear strictly what this plugin is doing, which is really cool because we want to know how the parallel sound is being processed. So next to that, you have four different bands here. You have low, low mids, high mids, and highs. And this basically allows you to, I would say, EQ the compression to some extent. And below these, you have uh, a knob per band. And these knobs have three settings each. And what this does is it allows you to change the frequency that the bands are affecting. So it doesn't tell you manual what frequency these are particularly affecting, but it does say that one would be the lowest of the lows and then three would be highest of the lows. And that is so forth for all the different bands here. Now for the width knob, that's pretty straightforward. That is basically just wide editing the sound. And depending what you're using this on, you may want to use it, you may not want to. If you're using it strictly on a snare drum, you probably wouldn't want to widen the sound. But since we're using it on a drum bus, we're probably gonna to want to widen it just a little bit. And then down at the bottom here, we have our input knob for gain and our output knob for gain. So those are pretty straightforward. 
And that's really all there is to the main controls in this plugin. Of course, on the load section here, you have all your different presets. Now, presets are good when using plugins you're not completely sure about, like maybe exactly what they do short of reading the manual, of course. But, uh, you know, these give you an idea of what these plugins are meant to be used on. So it says, hey, bass, snare, vocal. Those are very popular things you use parallel compression on. So that kind of gives it away right there. All right, so what we need to set first in this plugin before we start actually listening to the drums is we actually need to turn the direct either off or all the way down. And the reason for is because this is basically a mix knob and that would be if you're using it on the actual track. So if I actually put this plugin on the drum bus, that's when I would actually use this fader. But since we have the drum bus itself, which is basically our direct track, and then this is our parallel compression track, which is our, you know, tainted, our process track, uh, we have no reason to have direct signal on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this all the way down to 50, and I'm also gonna turn it off. So now we have the complete process signal on this parallel compression track. And what we'll also do is we will actually mute the drum bus here so that we can strictly listen to the parallel compression track and then we'll know what it actually sounds like. So let's actually give it a listen and see where we're at with it. Cool. So I actually think that sounds pretty good. You basically sat there and watched me dial this thing in all the way. And before I go over what I actually did, let's actually blend it in and see if it actually sounds good. Because uh, if I made it sound bad, there's no point in going over what I actually did. So I'm going to unmute the actual drum bus here. And then we'll actually pull this fader down. And then we're going to blend it in because that's the point of parallel compression. All right. So here we go. Pretty cool, huh? So I know that it actually gets louder and that obviously makes it sound better in that sense. But if you were really listening to the kick drum, the snare drum, and maybe some of the shimmer, that's what I use the EQ to get. When I was actually choosing my options over here, I was looking at my high mids here. I wanted that to be the snare drum. And I thought one was the best for the snare drum. The low mids were garbage. I just kept these all the way down. So I didn't even use anything with those. And I thought two was the best for the kick drum in this song because two was more of um, a low kick for more of a rock song in my mind. And that's what this song is. 
one was like would be great if i was doing like a hip-hop song or like a edm song that was that really low sub bass so that was pretty cool but i thought two was the best and then i thought one was pretty harsh this might actually have been more where three was at for the high mid. So I thought I wanted to get some of the air out of there, some of that really nice shimmer. So I did three and I did, you know, these are pretty minimal boost. And I thought that did, you know, an amazing job. And then of course I decided to widen it just a little bit. But when you actually hear how the, you know, drums are blended together now, I think the kick and snare sound amazing. I mean, I'd be curious to know what you guys think. You know, definitely leave a comment in the uh, section below and let me know what you think about this. And that's kind of the point of this plugin here. They're basically saying that if your track or your sound is at 80%, this can get it to 100%, you know, without having to do any crazy stuff here. You're basically having this compression happen behind the scenes, and then you're making some EQ adjustments to it. And then you can either have a separate track like I did and then blend it in, or you can use the, you know, direct knob here and blend it in. But that, guys, that's all there is to this plugin. Uh, it's a parallel compressor. It, you know, could take your sound from 80 to 100, as the manual says, if you do it right. Um, it's a good finisher plugin, you know, just to get something where it needs to be. You can even use it on a whole mix if you want to. Um, it all depends. So if you guys ended up liking this tutorial and you guys like this plugin, give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe because I love making this content for you. Hit that notification bell to know how many videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I'll see you guys later and peace out.